This is a response video to a video Jeremy Fee put up last week. It appears he hasn't been taken by pirates, he doesn't need to be rescued or anything. And after a long absence, he put up his most read authors up to Thanksgiving 2023. He invited us to look at our own most read authors, which is what I'm doing here. It's a very self-indulgent video. My name is Jim, this is my channel, Books reading and stuff. This battered notebook here comes from <laughs> about 1990 and in the 90s I would put lists of all the authors I'd read, the most read authors. It's not something I'm particularly interested in doing now. In 2021 I made it a point to read books by different authors each time so I didn't read the same author twice in 2021. In the past, in the 80s and 90s, I'd read a lot of the same authors. I'm going to start by looking at the authors I read the most by between 1980, when I was 15, and 1997. And this is by the books total. And I'm going to start at seven books. I read seven books by Agatha Christie, Sarah Paretsky, Alistair MacLean, Bernard Clavel. Bernard Clavel, I've read the most books by in French. Bernard Clavel's a French author. He wrote a lot of books set in Quebec. And David Morrell. David Morrell created Rambo in his book First Blood. Then with nine books, Bob Shaw. There's a lot of science fiction authors here because particularly 1980, 1981, 82, I was almost exclusively reading science fiction. Bob Shaw, nine books. Arthur C. Clarke, nine books. Alan Slito, hi. Debs at Raina Reads, because she's in Nottinghamshire, nine books. Also, the book with the longest title was by Alan Slito, The Loneliness of the Long Distance Runner. It's about 36 letters. That's the longest title for a book I've read. Uh, James Herbert. And Patricia Highsmith. Then Patricia Highsmith was the female author I'd read the most by. In 1980 and 1981, I almost read no female authors. When I started reading, I was mostly reading male authors, and that's changed over time. When I got more interested in crime, I found the authors I liked, Sarah Paretsky, Patricia Highsmith, Agatha Christie, were all female. Jeremy Fee looked at all the authors he'd read with 10 books or more. These are the ones I read with 10 books or more between 1980 and 1997. John Widom, 11 books. Neville Shute, 12 books. Neville Shute is famous for A Town Like Alice. Stephen King, 13 books. He knows, needs no introduction. Stephen King is also the author I've read the most pages by because I used to add up the number of pages and I've read over 7,000 pages by Stephen King. It's probably nearer 10,000 now because books like The Stand and It are over a thousand pages, and he writes weighty tomes. Then with 14 books, Isaac Asimov and Robert Silverberg. 16 books, Clifford D. Cmac. But the author I'd read the most by in number of books is Dick Francis, which might be a bit of a surprise if you know me. Um, I read a lot of Dick Francis in 1990 and 1991 because my first wife was really into horses. These uh, crime thrillers set in a horse racing world. Dick Francis used to be a jockey. They were all right. My wife, my first wife had a lot of these, which is why I went through so many. But they tended to be rather samey after a while. The protagonists were very similar to each other. That's not something I'd read these days. I don't have a complete list from 1980 to 2024 because I lost a lot of my notes from from before 1990, so I've missed 10 years of reading when I was reading a lot of science fiction and also horror, fantasy, and starting to read crime. I thought it'd be more interesting to look at the authors I've read the most since I started this booktube channel which was in September 2020. In September 2020, I was reading Dombey and Son by Charles Dickens. This was part of a long-term project of mine to read all of Dickens' novels before I die. I have three left to read. Barnaby Rudge, 
Nicholas Nickleby and The Mystery of Edwin Drood. And then we'll be done. There are four authors I've read three books by in this period. Jim Butcher, famous for the Dresden Files. I've read the first three of the Dresden Files. I'm told the series gets better, so I might stick with it. Margaret Atwood, his blind assassin, who I've also read three books by in this period. I've read probably six or seven books by her in my whole reading life. And then Peter R. Stone, who's probably new to most of you, is a YA author from Australia who writes post-apocalyptic fiction. And the first book I picked up by him, Forager, was the type of book that I wanted to write myself when I was a teenager. And it was uncanny how the ideas in that were similar to the ideas I had at the time, but I never got down to writing. And fourth, P. Jelly Clark, who wrote the steampunk novels set in a steampunk Cairo, like Master of Jin and The Haunting of Tramcar 015. And he also wrote Ring Shout, which is where the Ku Klux Klan turned out to be real monsters when he took the masks off. Then there are six authors who have read four books by Agatha Christie, who was also reading in the 90s and I have this on my TBR this month in memory of Alice who sadly passed away uh, Margaret Peanut who as many of you know is a booktuber and she wrote a trilogy the, about this Scottish family who emigrated to Canada the first book was The Keening then there was The Grasping Root, and then there was Stormwreck and Spindrift. And I've also read Fable Passages by her. She has two other books, but they're in the romance genre, which is really outside my comfort zone. Then Louis L'Amour. I can thank Michael K. Vaughan for that. Then his June on the Range. I read two in this June, and I read two the first June of June on the Range. Uh, Rachel Lynch, a crime writer who has a uh, police detective. These are police procedurals set in the Lake District, and I really like them. Uh, Charles Dickens. I've read four books by Charles Dickens since I've been on Booktube. And Sarah Paretsky. I've just finished Bodywork. This is the 14th V.I. Wachowski novel. I've now read 10 V.I. Wachowski novels, but there are over 20, so... I still have plenty more to go. The two authors I've read the most by, I don't have any physical books by them. This is because I've been reading them electronically on Kindle. With five books, in second place is Frida McFadden, who writes these popcorn thrillers with lots of twists. She's famous for writing The Handmaid. She's also written The Co-Worker, Inmate, and some others. I really liked The Co-Worker. I liked The Housemaid too. The Housemaid was the first I read and after that I'm expecting these twists in her tale. She reminds me a little of Ira Levin who also put some interesting twists in the tales. The stories are a bit implausible but it's very fast-paced and I enjoy them. And my most read author from reading in my booktube years is V.E. Schwab, or Victoria Schwab, who wrote The Invisible Life of Adi LaRue and also the Colour of Magic trilogy. And there's a fourth book in the Colour of Magic trilogy, which is on my TBR this month. And I just really like her writing and the, the ideas. And most of her books have been five star books for me. And I intend to read more books by V.E. Schwab in the future. There you are, Jeremy. Those are my most read authors in my past and from my booktube era. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you, my viewers, are happy to indulge me with this self-indulgent video. And I'll see you on the next video. Goodbye.